remember the sound. Power button. Black screen. Then that tone. Two notes. The PlayStation startup. That sound came from a 300 milliwatt laser reading a disc spinning at 500 RPM. The laser tracked pits half a micron wide, 200 times smaller than a human hair. At the disc's outer edge, it spun at over 200 miles per hour. One millimeter of vibration ruined the red. Sony engineered the drive to stay stable, even when you bumped the console during play. This is how Sony killed cartridges, not with marketing, with manufacturing precision that turned a slow CD into a gaming platform. Nineteen ninety four. Nintendo owned gaming. Their cartridges were fast, reliable, profitable. The industry believed CDs were too slow for real time gameplay. Sega tried with Sega CD, failed spectacularly. Sony saw differently. They'd made CD players since 1982. They understood optical drives better than competitors. Their theory if you can't make CDs faster, make everything around them smarter. The PlayStation CD held 650 megabytes. Nintendo cartridges held 64, 10 times more storage. But CDs read slower, much slower. Sony's solution, a 512 kilobyte buffer. The system loaded the next 30 seconds of gameplay while you played. Level one loads. While you play it, level two loads in background. This required precise coordination between CD drive, processor, and memory. Engineers predicted what data you'd need and loaded it preemptively. Those loading screens you remember? The buffer masking the CD's actual speed. Technical limitation turned into seamless experience. Every disc starts with polycarbonate plastic heated to 300 degrees. A laser etches data. Another reads those half micron pits while spinning. The 300 milliwatt laser, twice as powerful as regular CD players, maintains lock during vibration. The system stays within 0.1 microns of alignment. Sony tested each drive for 50,000 read cycles. If the lens drifted 0.05 degrees, the unit got scrapped. The 33 megahertz processor paired with Sony's graphics chip rendered 180,000 polygons per second. True 3D worlds, depth, Shadows, lighting. The graphics chip. Half micron process technology. 1.5 million transistors on silicon smaller than your thumbnail. Factories a thousand times cleaner than hospitals. Sony made their own semiconductors. Complete control over quality and cost. By 1997, chip costs dropped from $28 to $8. You remember Final Fantasy VII, three discs, 40 hours, orchestral music, pre-rendered cinematics, the opening, the train, Midgar, Aerith. That was possible because CDs held 650 megabytes, cartridges couldn't, Metal Gear Solid, two discs, Hollywood voice acting, codec conversations, Psycho Mantis reading your memory card, knowing what you'd been playing. Storage made that possible, Gran Turismo, Hundreds of licensed cars, real engine sounds, licensed music, all because CDS held enough data. Silent Hill. The fog wasn't just atmosphere, it was technical limitation, but CDs held ambient sounds, footsteps, radio static. Audio made horror real where graphics couldn't. Storage changed what games could be. Every console went through 72 hours of stress testing at 45 degrees Celsius, like leaving it in a hot car for three days. The system simulated five years of use. Sony rejected 8% of finished consoles at final inspection. One in 12 units that completed assembly still didn't meet standards. They destroyed them rather than risk warranty claims. Assembly took 45 minutes per console, 28 manual steps, at peak, Sony manufactured 3 million PlayStations per month across Japan, China, Malaysia. Each unit passed 15 quality checkpoints. 
The cost breakdown, CD drive $18, graphics chip $28, processor $12, RAM, controller, case, assembly brought total manufacturing cost to $106. Sony sold it for $299. That's $193 profit per console, plus $15 to $20 on every game through licensing fees. With 1,100 games released, the real money wasn't hardware. It was the ecosystem. You remember the gray card. 15 blocks. Memory card full. Final Fantasy. 7 took 1 block. Multiple saves needed space. Delete something? Never. What if you needed it? Memory cards made gaming personal. Your saves. Your progress. Take the card to a friend's house. Show your game. Cartridges saved to themselves. Everyone shared saves. Memory cards. Made your game yours. You remember which saves you kept, which you deleted. That panic of running out of space. That was PlayStation. By 2006, Sony sold 102 million PlayStations. The CD gamble worked beyond predictions. Storage jumped from 64 megabytes to 650. Games got voices, music, cinematics, stories that took 40 hours to tell. You remember those games not because of the 33 megahertz processor. You remember them because Sony's manufacturing precision, the 300 milliwatt laser, the 512 kilobyte buffer, the half micron tolerances, the 72 hour stress tests, created experiences cartridges couldn't match. The startup sound you remember was engineering. Two notes from a laser reading a disc at exact alignment. The three disc Final Fantasy VII was possible because Sony rejected 8% of consoles to maintain quality. Psycho Mantis reading your memory card was clever design born from CDROM's read-only limitation. PlayStation proved the harder path works. CDs were slower, but held more data. 3D graphics were harder to program, but created deeper experiences. Manufacturing to that quality standard cost more upfront, but built trust that lasted a generation. A Walkman company beat Nintendo at their own game. Not through marketing or luck, through precision engineering and solving problems everyone said couldn't be solved. But Sony wasn't done. While others tried to catch up, Sony prepared something unthinkable. A console so ambitious it could play both games and movies, powered by a chip so advanced it barely existed. A machine that would become the best-selling console of all time, but almost bankrupted the company that built it. This is how PlayStation 2 changed everything.